good morning. It's Wednesday. Now, Wednesday, traditionally, would be me going to do cleaning. However, today, or should I say, yesterday afternoon, I got a phone call to say that they weren't going to be in. Something had come up. Uh, could I come Thursday? Now, Thursday, I was going to go on another hike. So, I've moved things around and I was going to go on the hike on the Thursday because on Friday the weather is going to turn. And I don't want to be hiking in the rain up on the hills. That's the no idea of fun. So, I am now going on my hike on Wednesday and cleaning Thursday. When I did my hike last week, which was great. But the next day, I felt like a truck had run over me. Oh my goodness. Uh, but I had the day off, so it wasn't too bad. I had the time to just relax and try and get my muscles back in order. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk today because tomorrow I've then got to do a three hour clean. So if I'm really stiff, I'm just gonna have to muddle along. However, today's hike is um, not what I was thinking of doing. I've had a look at the, the other trip I was going to do and I'm not that fussed by it. However, I did some more research into where we got lost. Last, last time. And I followed the trail as if we had carried on going the way that we had got lost on. And we would have ended up at a car park called Stand Edge Cutting, um, which is another free car park, it looks pretty good. And so what I've decided to do today is I'm going to go up Stand Edge Car Park and I'm going to walk towards the Wessenden Reservoir and basically meet up with where we went wrong where I met Alex and Emma last time. Now this isn't the circular route and it looks pretty flat. I don't think it's going to have anywhere near as much hard uh, you know like gradients and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to give this a go because I've just got the urge to do it. This is the last chance I'm going to get before I go away. The weather's really good. It is going to be very hot today, and today was not the day that I wanted to be doing this because of that. However, I've started early. It's not even eight o'clock yet, and I'm going to, if I can get start early, and because it's a flatter route and I'm not going to get lost with any luck, I will be back and out of that heat before it gets really hot because here where I am here at the moment it's going to hit 28 later today um, just dipping into Sainsbury's before I go because I spotted a freebie on one of the apps which would make a really nice travel snack uh, so I'm going to see if I can pick that up along the way I have brought more snacks this time. I'm a little, little bit better prepared than I was. So let's pop in here. Right, no freebies in Sainsbury's, so let's head off. Get ourselves organized. and see you at the other end.
So here I am, I've made it. This is another fabulous little car park. There are so many free car parks up here, it's just absolutely brilliant. So, uh, I'm going to get myself organised. And, uh, yeah, we'll take you on another little walk. I don't know what this one's going to be like. It's quite breezy up here, thank goodness, because it's going to be absolutely roasty otherwise. Uh, let's get organised. So here I am. Just about to head off. Lovely fresh breeze up here. Very hazy today. So let's get walking. Oh, black slugs.
Kalews, Golden Plovers, and I think that's a hobby. Now, which way do I go? This is really flat out here. This is lovely. <laughs> if it stays like this, I'm not going to come up with half as many achy bones <laughs> and joints as last time. The wind is really strong up here, which frankly is an absolute blessing because it's very cooling. Now, there are some reservoirs along here, all the names of which I won't remember, so I'm going to put them up on the screen afterwards. So when you're watching this, see there's one in the distance there. Um, yeah, I'll try and put as many landmarks as possible up on this. This is good. Now, when I parked up, you probably would have seen another trail run in the opposite direction. And if I walked on that, I think I would have ended up somewhere around Hebden Bridge. So maybe that's another walk for another day. I, uh, I want to do things gradually and there's limitations as to how much I can get done. Obviously there are days where I'm not available and I would never go out and do this sort of thing at the weekend because I bet these trails are absolutely rammed at the weekend. walking is two dogs coming up behind me so they may stop in a bit for a, a rest let him go I've already seen a couple of people since I've been up here I do need to get my water out actually so an opportunity to stop in a second. Friendly dog. Not such a friendly owner, though he kind of looks like a landowner, like he, he's got a dog whistle and he's got like a proper game person's type bag. He didn't have a sense of humour. Anyway. I didn't bring my binoculars today. Oh look, can I do boating there? Fabulous view. This is glorious. Look at this view. This is amazing.
If I could do one of these every week, this would make a big difference to my week. Now that I've shifted around my home studio, I have felt a bit more inspired and I've made a couple of things, which makes a huge difference. So I've been busy making stuff and feeling a bit less cluttered and these hikes really they really take me out of where I live which is not particularly ideal I mean honestly I'd rather be living out here in the middle of nowhere this is my idea of a place to live but beggars can't be choosers and at least I have somewhere of my own to live and although it took me about 40 minutes to get here this, I think car park was only about, it's only about 14 miles, but it takes a long time to get to because of, you know, I was going in the morning traffic and all that sort of thing. Now I think I need to turn where that chap's just gone. So I'm gonna check my map when I reach this signpost. Because even when Google Maps loses signal on the 4Gs, and it's not actually that bad up here because they have the masts up here for the extended signals anyway, I think. So I had signal back there and at least it'll roughly plot where you are so it does its job but I'm pretty sure that I need to turn right here Oh yeah, look left so here we are, look. Left for Marsden, right for Westendon and Blackhill, which is where I'm going. And then back behind me for Standage. I'm still going to have a look. Yeah, so it's basically turn right and keep on going. Quite a lot of cloud cover coming and going up here. It's not going to rain today, but um, some slightly heavier ground here. Little stream. It's not even a stream, is it? Easy and crossing those other brooks last week, anyway. These laid out routes do make things easier.
Okay, the skylarks up here and the curlews. I don't know if you can hear them. It's a bit of an uphill gradient this. It's, uh, it's gentle but continuous as we aim for the top here. So excuse the heavy breathing as I am massively unfit. <sighs> One hike like this every week would soon knock me into shape I think. Now that my money situation isn't I need to find out what these white things are. Looks like cotton. Super fluffy. Like being in a cotton field. Um, yeah. So now that my money situation with my income has kind of evened itself out, I'm feeling a bit more like I can do these weekly drives out. I mean it's not far. 40 miles is nothing petrol wise in my car and now that things feel a little bit better I'm just starting to reach that point where I'm fed up of not doing stuff. I'm starting to feel a bit more motivated again and The last couple of years have been about hunkering down, undoing damage and all that sort of stuff. But now I've done that, I can choose to carefully spend a little bit of my money on the things that I enjoy. And at the moment, that's doing this. This adds a huge uplift to my week. I felt pretty buoyant and energised and enthusiastic since last week, which is why I suddenly decided I'm going to completely, well, kind of completely reorganised my studio. I felt I had the, the mental energy and the enthusiasm to do it. And that's what exercise does for you. You, uh, the more you do, it doesn't just lift your body. It lifts your mind and your mental state into a slightly higher level of feeling like you want to do more. Because the less you do, the less you want to do. The more you do, the more you want to do. It's a trick of the brain. So if you sit around all day saying, not, not doing anything and waiting for things to come to you, it'll never happen. But if you choose to go out and do that walk, or that trip into town, or that day out with friends, whatever it is that works for you and you can do, it does make a difference. Whew. so pleased for that wind. Having said that, the walk back is going to be fun. Oh, look at that view. I'd love to walk to the top of that peak. Need to find out what that's called.
When I was a kid, we used to go on holiday to the Lake District and Dad would plot walking routes with his Wainwright books. We did all the, well not all of them, but we attempted all sorts of mountains. We did Skiddor. I think that was probably the highest we did, but I mean, the last time I went on holiday with them to the Lake District, I think I was 18, so I probably would have been like 14 or 15 when we bought Skiddor. Oh. Oh, there's a view coming up. You're getting ready for this. I had my binoculars, I could see what that bird was. How annoying. If I can remember those chirps, I'll look it up when I get back. Should be an easy one to remember. Now, I'm going to look up what this reservoir is. Give me a minute. So that is Black Moss Reservoir. downward which would be nice. Pay for it on the way back. <laughs> oh, this wind is whipping up my nose. Makes me really sniffly. the fluffy stuff. This is the flowers of the reeds. You have to forgive the picture, I can hardly see the screen because it's so like bright out here. Trying to keep the light down so that the battery lasts. Water. Oh. 
There's a van down there. I wonder where the road is to get down here. Guessing it's the water company. So I need to go left around the reservoir, following this very smart little pathway, and then head off around the other side of the reservoir and keep following the path straight, and that'll take me all the way to Wessenden. Or a 19. Who knows? I think I've taken the wrong path. Hang on. Should I go down there? I think I might have to go down there. I think I've taken a wrong route. paths running parallel but the one I'm following didn't feel like it was going to end up going around the reservoir so we'll go down to where the signposts are there and that main track which will be the Pennine way as opposed to whatever I'm walking here Tiny can there, so we need to go down here. This is what foxed me. I decided not to take this track. But it's, a, it's a proper path, it's just very small. Well, uh, which one? Let's take the middle one. Oh, it's the canals and river trust people. I'll have to work on this path, look at that. Hikers galore. There's 
the reservoir right there. Gosh, look at this swanky walkway. They made this easy, didn't they? Tell you what though, on a really hot day, you could probably go and dunk your feet in the water. This feels like it's not turning into the hot day that was promised. It's very hazy. I can't work out what the clouds are doing. Although, I think when you're walking like this, it's better to be a little bit chilly than too hot. Makes the walking easier. That heat on that other walk I did last week was exhausting. The heat was worse than the walking and that's what exhausted you in the end. Because it said it was going to hit 21 but by the time I left I think it was about 23 and there was no shelter. I always think when my plans get changed that it's for a good reason and I was worried it's going to be too hot today but this is definitely not too hot I might have to look at the weather in a minute because it looks a little bit iffy up ahead looks murky but things can change so fast Followed that path, look. <sighs> now, is it this way or is it that way? Let's have another look at the map. So it's this path which goes between Black Moss Reservoir and the other one, which is looks pretty drained and dry at the moment is Swellens Reservoir. This hike is spectacular. And really easy, which I need today because the rest of my week's going to be pretty busy. I haven't got time to recuperate really. I feel like with all the heat we've had, these reservoirs are looking pretty low. Look at that. Oh, it looks like being at the beach. It says keep out of the water, but look. You could come here for a day at the beach without all the people on the beach. I bet this gets so busy at the weekend though. I'm waiting for the wind to whip off my little spongy wind muffler. Um, but so far, Tell. 
two birds. What are you? Oh, you're meadow pipits. Hello, meadow pipits. Um, a bit annoyed by my presence, I think. Getting in their way. This is a fabulous little wall. Look at the colour. Uh, it shows up on this camera. But that water is like in a really deep inky blue. And that's because, I would imagine, because the colour of the sky is bouncing off it. And then you've got all that lovely natural ground down there. Wow, Swollen's Reservoir is dry. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Maybe they're doing some work on it and they've drained it. Maybe it's not going to be a reservoir anymore. Hey little meadow pipits, I see you. Oh gosh. Nobody anywhere. I like this windswept route. I might like this more than last week's. Just like the view. This is very Wuthering Heights. Gives you a Jane Austen feel or a George Eliot or something. It's got that very old feel to it. Because nothing has been, well, to a certain extent, nothing's been ruined by man. I mean, they're pushing the reservoirs, but. At least they provide something for nature. Oh. I'm guessing this is what joins up the two reservoirs, but not at the moment it doesn't. So now I think we just keep going straight. helicopter I saw last week. This must be a route for them. The clouds are pretty low. You can hardly, you can't see them at all. Oh, 
I always think skylarks are something I remember well from my childhood. So do you remember the original Mr. Ben? Uh, it's not Mr. Ben, uh, the Mr. Men, Roger Hargreaves. The cartoons on TV, the originals. In the background, there's always the sound of skylarks. It was the backdrop sounds to the Mr. Men cartoons. And never ever forgotten that. <laughs> Thistles. Tiny hole, someone living in there. Fox gloves. Foxglass get everywhere up here. I forget what a wild plant they are. Water. Swelland Reservoir again. It does look bleak. young trees up here. I don't know whether they've been doing a planting program or whether they've just naturally rooted themselves. Look at that peat. And then this little brook running down through the middle down towards where the reservoir is I love these paths I wonder how old these are and these look well set in Tiny can, and I have nothing to add.
great thing about these well laid out routes is that it stops the soil erosion from many tourists and walkers because it's keeping you on a path and of course keeping you on a path keeps you from getting lost you can't get lost on a a well laid out route like this and it just makes things a bit easier for people like me who want to get out, want to get better at it but aren't really savvy hikers you know I can walk, I can follow a route and follow a map but I don't want to be doing any mountaineering anytime soon that's for sure look at this peat again it's like a cliff edge Peat is the stuff that absorbs all our carbon in the air and what have you. And we've been destroying great swathes of it over the generations. They used to burn it as fuel. And then we started buying it in plastic bags for our gardens. Which is why buying peat free compost is a good move because the less compost you buy with peat in it the less of this peat gets chopped out of the ground and it takes I don't know probably thousands of years of life and nature and weather to make this peat it preserves all sorts of things, you know, they found what was he called? Peat Bog Man? I can't remember what his name was. An incredibly well preserved body that they found, and he could, literally he was just preserved in the ground, a bit squashed because he'd been buried under lots of peat, which is heavy stuff. But he was perfectly preserved, you know, all the the bristles on his face where his beard would have been. And every wrinkle in his skin. Oh, it was just incredible. It's a snapshot of history. I'll try and put a link to some information about him. Peat is a very valuable thing that we shouldn't be digging out the ground. If for no other reason than if there wasn't any peat you wouldn't have these landscapes. Because this is all made on all these generational layers of peat. Now this route I'm doing is about five miles there and back but it's definitely easier than last week and a lot cooler ferns of the tree of the trip.
one solitary foxglove. I feel like I'm coming down into a, almost into a valley. I'm guessing somewhere at the bottom of that is going to be the Wessenden Reservoir. Be wrong. We're back onto the natural ground now. cyclists on motorbikes. There's a building right down there in the distance. laid out path is going to appear in a, a bit. That is so irritating and unnecessary. Makes me so angry. Why do dog walkers have to do this? Honestly. I don't know where the next bin's going to be, so do I want to walk around with a, a dog poo bag? I might pick it up on the way back, because that's really irritating. If you're going to own a dog, understand you are going to have to carry its poop around in bags. If you're not prepared to do that, then you shouldn't have one. Shocking. You know what? I think that's the reservoir down there at the end. I'm not going to go that far because if I do, I'm going to end up having to cross those brooks that I did last time. I'm not doing that. I'm going to go as far as I think where that really crazy steep incline was with the steps where just after that I met Alex and Emma. I'm going to stop there eat my snacks. It's not really snacks. Ooh. 
that's pollution. That looks like oil. Don't like that. There's more there. What is that? Anyway. Yeah, that's the reservoir. That was an easy hike, wasn't it? Still five miles. But significantly flatter and cooler. If you're a novice hiker, this is the walk for you. It's easier than last week's anyway. Trying to be extra careful on these paths today. 
I have been really accident prone the last couple of days. I keep dropping things and tripping over things. And I have days like that. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with me. So the last thing I want is to fall over or twist an ankle out here because one of the things that I'm not very good at doing because I like my independence is I don't tell people where I'm going so nobody knows I'm out here today at all don't hear when you're up here is crickets. And I thought it would be grassy enough up here for crickets, but I've never heard any. There's the reservoir. There's last week's walk flashing back in front of my face. I feel the heat coming up off the off the peaty ground and it's really bouncy. This is nice, look at this. Now, I don't know if you can just see it above the fern line there, that square. That's the metal thing with the solar panel on the top of it. That was the marker for that really, really steep rocky path that was the route we should have taken last week. So I'm not far from the end of my route now. And when I get there, I'm hoping I can just sit for a bit and have some water, eat my snack, and just enjoy being out here. It's only 10 o'clock. Which is good because it means I'm going to beat the, the heat of the day. I'm going to be back home by mid-afternoon at this rate. Now, where was the point where we got lost? I think this is it. Here. I mean, if you had someone else who was going to pick you up, you could just do straight routes like this. The problem is, when you want to get home again, you have to go back to wherever you left your car. There's a willow warbler. I'm not going to go any further than this. What I'm going to do is just walk back a little bit and find a place to sit. I mean, I could sit on the steps, but could do actually. These are the steps. It's basically here where we all met. <laughs> you 
Yeah, let's walk back a little bit and find somewhere to sit. I might stop here. Yeah, stop here for a bit. There's no ants nest in there. Oh, perfect seat height. Break time. Wind swept. I'm fed and watered. All you can hear is meadow pipits and the brook and sadly the occasional aeroplane. It's not too bad. I'm going to start walking back in a minute. And it's still pretty early, so I'm going to take a leisurely stroll because I'm in no rush to be anywhere. And I'm not going to record the going back journey because you've now seen it one way. Um, but I might see if there are any alternative loops I can do on the way back. I'll have a look at the map and see. But this is absolutely glorious today. So quiet. So right, I'm going to leave now, and uh, if I end up taking a slightly different route on the way back, I will take you along for the ride. Um, otherwise, this is where it ends. For you, anyway. This is a great way to break up the week. Let's go walking again. I just flushed a grouse out. Didn't know they were here. It's a red grouse. And it's just... It leapt out of the out of the ground near the path and is hiding somewhere up there now. Made a right old racket as it went.
He's very annoyed at me. But he's not going to show himself again now. I should have my camera going. You would have seen him. Never mind. That's fun. That's a new bird. Quite close as well. Red grouse. Beautiful bird. Very noisy. And very angry. It's not going to show its face again now. He's hiding from me. I should keep an eye out for, for them now. But I'm guessing they're really well hunkered down in the... Uh, in the heather, yeah. Typical, as soon as I put the camera away for the walk back, all the interesting stuff came out. So you missed the red grouse. Did you like the caterpillar? No idea what that was. I will look it up when I get back and add the information here. So now I've got the camera back out again because I don't want to miss anything that you might be interested in. <sighs> but this is essentially the same walk back as I did out. I, uh, I did pick up the dog poo bag in case you're wondering. And because I had eaten my snacks, I had an empty Tupperware box with a good seal on it. So I've put it in that rather than carrying it all the way back. And I will dispose of it in a more environmentally friendly way. I've seen more rubbish on this route than last week. Um, tissues mostly. I think if people pull something out their pocket and their tissue goes flying. Tissues are a waste of money. And not good for the environment. I use handkerchiefs. And I remember mentioning this on a, I don't know, some kind of website or social media, I think it was. And somebody said how completely disgusting it was that you used a handkerchief. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why it's disgusting. People have been using them for thousands, well, not thousands, but hundreds of years. You use it and you put it in the washing machine and it comes out clean. Tissues you spend money on, they mostly end up in, in the environment, like today I've seen six or seven of them dropped, flying around. I think, seeing as I'm doing so well today, I might Hmm. I'm wondering if I can add to my route a little bit. Might go and look at the... Ooh. Who 
this feather is that? I don't know what that is. Um, I might see if I can do a circuit of that dried up reservoir. The, uh, is it Swellens? Swellens? Because I'm back at that point now, and look, you can see there's a path that runs all the way down to it. I don't think I can walk around it, but seeing as I have the the time, energy and weather on my side, I might do that. I think at some point this year I'm going to invest in new walking boots. These high techs I'm wearing, which I bought for about nine quid three years ago, second hand on eBay, have done me really well. I have had to repair them, but they were second hand when I got them, so a couple of times I've had to re glue where the sole comes up the side and meets the, the body of the shoe. My second glue line seems to be holding really well. I have rubbed away a lot of the cushioning in the back of the heel and that started to rub on my last trip but I still had that sponge left over from when I cut out the bit from, to make my wind muffler. So I cut out a strip of it and I've put it in the back of the heel of that particular shoe and it's really comfortable because I got quite a blister last week and it's still there. And I've just managed to position the sponge in just the right place and now it doesn't hurt at all. So I'm happy to keep these shoes going as long as possible and it may be that when I need to replace them I buy the same type again because finding the right shoe for you is really difficult. I decided to have a look at Skechers because they do hiking and walking boots and I found a pair, I found a second hand pair and a brand new pair on Vinted and I looked them up on the Skechers site and they were a lot cheaper second hand on Vinted. The, the used ones weren't very worn, the new ones were new but one size too big for me which I don't think is always such a bad thing for walking boots because you can you can wear thicker socks but and they were waterproof pairs but when I read the reviews on the Skechers website they were dreadful and I know people have their own opinions of certain shoes I mean now having had experience of Skechers I would absolutely buy them again because my trainers are fabulous. If it wasn't for the fact that I don't want to ruin them, I'd wear them out on hikes. But I've put my separate pair of memory foam inserts into my walking boots and it's made such a difference. And they weren't even like really expensive memory foam insoles. So now I'm just thinking about trying to buy these trainers, these hiking boots again, that I already own. And I mean, they're just high techs. But I like that they come up over the ankle. And uh, they're really comfortable. So I'd rather buy the same pair again, knowing what I'm going to get, than something new that I'm not sure about, because I'm really funny about shoes. It takes me ages to break shoes in. And when I found a pair that I really like, I just keep wearing them. I just keep wearing the same ones over and over again. Because when you find something that works, why change it? I'm not a big fan of buying shoes. 
I have lots of shoes, mostly second hand. Used to be really into Converse. And there was a shop called Cow that I used to go to when I first moved up to the north. And you could get loads of second hand Converse for less than a tenner. So I used to buy, I used to, every time I went past I'd go in and if there were a pair I'd buy them. So I've got loads of Converse, well I say loads. I've got four or five pairs of Converse in all different colours. But I don't wear them as often now because they have no support in the soles. And as I've got older, my feet have decided that they like having memory foam in inserts. So now I've got this pair of memory foam inserts and I will probably get a couple more pairs the same. I was going to get another type, but I heard really bad things about them. They were really cheap and nasty. And again, there's other people's reviews, so you don't know till you try them yourself. But these black ones I bought were so cheap. And I thought they're so thin, but they work. They add just enough cushioning to the sole that I now don't end up with pain in my feet at the end of the day. So although I was absolutely knackered last week when I came back from my Wessendon hike, it was in my legs and my knees, but my feet were fine. And my legs hurt was because I was making my muscles work for a change. And there was a lot of gradients I was walking. So man, that was good, that was good pain. That meant my muscles were doing their work. Look, we're back at the Black Moss Reservoir. I should have stopped here for my snack. So I'm back on that strip of walkway between the reservoirs. So I think I'm gonna, you see on the right there, there's another pathway, that path keeps going. I think I'm going to turn right and just go and have a look at this other reservoir and then go back but I'm also going to have a look and see where the rest of that main track goes just to the left because if I can take a slightly circuitous route back to the car park then I will Ooh. That could be that could be the sandpipers. Can you hear that? to it. I will look that up when I get back as well. Now I can see the bird a bit better than I did last week. Looks like the same bird from the last week on the Wessenden Reservoir. Oh no, it's come back across now. sandpiper. Although 
keeps bouncing his tail like a like a wagtail. Who are you? go because he's not happy with me being here. But I'm pretty sure that's a sandpiper. I'm probably wrong. Having never seen one before, it's not a golden plover. Lovely, it'd be lovely to see one but it's not got the right kind of plumage either. Um, oh, it's warmer down here. The sun's coming out. Cold wind off the reservoir is very nice though. Seen some new birds today, that's pretty cool. That red grouse is a real plus. the weather changes so if you go back up over there it turns really cloudy and feels like it's going to rain and then either side of that it's like blue sky sunshine and 20 degrees it's really strange but it's the pockets of weather in different areas so here I am back at that swanky wooden footpath. Which is rather splendid. And if I turn right, that'll take me down to the Swelland Reservoir, which I'm going to do because I'm feeling pretty good. And it's not far, and it's not going to take me far anyway, because I think it just comes to a dead end. So let's have a look at that. Look at all this fanciness they've been doing here. Oh, there's a path there. Please use this track to access Swelland's Dam. This is to avoid restoration areas and ground nesting birds on the reservoir shore. Hmm. Well, I'm going to follow this down, but I might have a look at the map because going to a dam sounds quite interesting. Depends how far it is. If I can pick up a loop, even better. So that's where I was. Oh, look big bird flying across to the left in the distance. I wonder if that's a bird of prey. So that's where I was. And there's a 
walker right in the distance crossing the other side of Black Moss there. The only other person I've seen since I've been out really, which is perfect. So I'm guessing they've put all these pathways in as access for the reservoir because I guess they have to get their vehicles down here. But it's also nice, safe, guided walking areas for humans because there are lots of birds nesting out here, lots of ground nesting birds, so they're really vulnerable. So if you're out with your dog, please keep your dog on a blooming lead. All the dogs I've seen out on the trails so far have not been on leads. And it's okay if you've got a dog that will stick by your side, but a lot of them will go off running out into the, out into the bush. And the ground birds do not like that. Oh, it's helicopter. They like coming over here. I guess this is the straightest route. That looks like it's the emergency rescue helicopter. He's blue and yellow, and I'm sure they're that colour out here. So this is the dried up reservoir. And I don't know whether that's just because it's really dry at the moment. I mean, I thought we'd had lots of rain, but you need a lot of rain to fill a reservoir. That's for sure. So I'm just going to go to the end of this and just have a look at it as a vantage point. And then I shall go back and I'm going to have a look at where that trail to the dam leads. So I guess this is what a drought looks like. Now, some of the other trails that I've been on in the past have been the Longdendale Trail. And I have seen the reservoir out there, which is an incredibly big reservoir, but I've seen that down to its last drops of water. And that was a worrying sight. So, This is the Svelands Reservoir. I can hear curlews. I can't see anything, but I bet everything's watching me. So this is a really dried up reservoir, and it might be this reservoir is you know, really susceptible to drying up because the other one's still full. There's little patches of water, but not much. Looks like a thumbnail picture, what do you reckon? So I can't find that trail to the dam on my map, but that isn't really any surprise because it's a very small track. However, I might try it. Once I've got up over the hump of that hill, I'll get an idea of how far it might be. And also if there might be a pickup route further down. Because I know that the, uh, the original path I walked in on carried on in a straight line. I turned right come towards these reservoirs but you could keep going straight on so 
it may well be that I can pick up further down. I will draw a route map. for my day and then at least you can see where I've been and then I can work out the actual mileage I've done because it's pretty good that you can draw walking route maps on Google Maps as well and it will follow tracks like the Pennine Trail so you can draw pretty good maps post route so up here on the right is this little track I can follow and we'll see if it might be doable because I don't like walking the exact same route it's nice to see something new which is like why well, I like doing circular routes better than out and backs rather tempting so it says I can take this route so there we go I think it's gonna take me out to that can you see that wall I mean, that would make sense that that was a dam and it's at Svelland's Reservoir. So let's, let's do this thing. I'd love the idea of getting out right onto these moorlands here. And if I'm allowed to, then I'm happy to do it. So let's give this a go. Might not be able to plot this on Google Maps though because this isn't an official trail. Oh gosh, where am I going? It's not very clear, is it? Although there's a lot of I mean, I'm assuming this is the right way. It looks like it's been well trodden. I mean, this does look like a track. I can't tell if this is people though. Very boggy, but it does look walked. signs of steps some of them look like horses but some of them are definitely people right so let's give this a go because I think this is going to end up over there You can see signs of a walked track, just not that walked.
Gosh, it's very boggy out here. Heavens. Feel yourself sinking in places. Birds of prey out here somewhere. We do have it's marsh and hen harriers out here, but the pictures on the posts along here suggest that there are hobbies out here as well, which are a bit like let's say they're a bit like a kestrel. small, fast little bird that no doubt likes to eat the odd meadow pipette. I don't know where they'd be nesting out here. I don't know if they're ground nesting birds. They may well be. Not many trees out here, that's for sure. Right, well this is definitely still a track. Goodness me, this is boggy. I don't want to get stuck. That's not too bad. Yeah, this is where I'm going to go, out there. That'll be pretty cool. That'll be a nice little diversion. And I suspect I will have to come back along the same route and pick up the original track that I used to come in here. But this is pretty good. It's still reasonably accessible as well. It's not difficult and it's flat. So this is doable for novice, novice hikers as well. Just watching where I step. middle of nowhere. And there's a reservoir, Swellens Reservoir. So this is the track you do use, that's the track you don't use, which is that one. Which I presume is just a bit too close to the edge of the reservoir. So if I keep following along here, there are little stakes all the way along. And you can see them in the distance. And I presume that is guidance for us walkers. There's a bit of water down there.
can see birds down there. There are some waders down there. See, now I should have brought the binoculars. How annoying. See, when you don't bring them, you need them. When you bring them, you don't. Ah, oh dear. Never mind. There are probably curlews down there. And I would imagine those sandpipers, if that's what they are. I've heard there are red shanks up here as well. But there's not much chance of me seeing who's who from up here. Missed. I'm sure they don't care whether I identify them or not. Yeah, this is the Swellens Dam. It's a nice little detour. So if that's damned, then maybe they deliberately shut that off. Because you can see where there's a pipe that comes through the dam there. You can see that. That contraption thing there. That looks like a pipe running from the top down to the bottom. So, I wonder if there's more reservoir on the other side of this. We'll follow the wooden stakes. Oh. so many birds running around down there and I can't, I'm not going to be able to tell what any of them are. I need to take a photograph of that angle because that was a lovely piece of architecture there. So if I just nip along this bit here, Fantastic. I don't feel brave enough to walk that. <laughs> I'm going to go around the edge, <laughs> which looks like it's allowed. But I see no more reservoir on the other side. Just rocks and birds. That's the other side of the dam. I'll try and add a little bit of history to these reservoirs because a lot of them are quite old. And I know that on some reservoirs they flooded villages and things to put them in. And there are some very strong stories around that. But um, look at this viewpoint. 
God, I wish I brought the binoculars. This is such a missed opportunity for bird watching. I'm so annoyed at myself. I'm going to walk the length of this rather splendid little wall, which is in fact the reservoir, the dam. Look at this splendid little wall. That deserves a picture as well. This is a very well-mown bit of grass. I wonder if there are rabbits out here. And probably a few sheep, I would imagine. Birds everywhere. Look at this. Presumably that's the access point for the dam. The birds are everywhere and they're taunting me. <laughs> Look at us! but you can't see what we are. This looks like it's mostly meadow pipits. They're all watching me and getting very annoyed. It doesn't say I can't walk here though. So if I just take my time. something very strange about an empty reservoir. I don't know why. I'm going to go to the end and then turn around and go back. And that'll be an extra little detour. the wall. Oh yeah, well, this is a good viewpoint for bird watching. I can see footprints going right across there. So I can, I'm pretty sure I can see a curlew down there. Oh, no, is that too small for a curlew? I can hear them. that might be a wagtail down there. Do you know what, from this height it's really difficult to... I am so annoyed at myself for not bringing the binoculars. What an opportunity. I mean, I could come back, but is it worth it? See this? I'm guessing this is some kind of water inlet to bring the water down into the reservoir. This would have been the place for snacks, wouldn't it? Could have sat here.
this is the end of the line, I think. Water inlet. It's funny to think that probably like a hundred years ago they were carting all this stone up here and working to build these reservoirs. Do one big 360 degree for you. Oh, look at that. The date stone. 1860. <laughs> That's a lot older than I thought it was. Wow. This wall has survived everything since 1860, with probably a few modifications and repairs along the way. But boy, did they know how to build a wall back then. So they were building these reservoirs in a time long before vehicles. So they, this is horse and carts and men. Lost a few stones there.
These birds have found themselves a really safe place to live down here. I can't imagine an awful lot of walkers come over here on a regular basis. So they're probably not getting too much intrusion from the likes of us. Which is good. And these huge expanses of moorland are some of the last places of safety. And we need to keep these places difficult to get to. Because you get too many tourists up in these places and they get ruined. I would rather not have the access and leave it to nature than be tramping all over it. So, we shall head mindfully back the way we came and I suspect pick up the same route we came in on. I have no idea how much battery is left on this camera but because I only use this as my recording camera now. The battery lasts ages. And I have a charger in the car. This is another reason why I like recording on a separate phone. It's because my, my phone that I use as my phone, the battery isn't that great. But that's largely because there's so many apps running and I'm using the maps and you know if I use the camera it takes up space as well. So uh, that's what drains the battery really fast so I preserve that phone for maps so that I don't get lost on these routes and then use this one for recording because Provided I'm reasonably careful, this will last all day. And I'd much rather record lots of material and then edit it afterwards. But it, like that Wessenden trail video that I did recently, that took me two days to edit because you have to be quite scrupulous about what you leave in because you don't want to end up with a video that's ridiculously long and not that interesting. So you want to put enough in of the walk, particularly the bits where I'm not talking. And I do that for people who can't get out to places like this but would like to. And if I can record sections of it, have I gone wrong? I can't tell if I've gone wrong. Should I be following those posts there? I can't find my way back now.
carry on here, heaven knows where I'm going to end up. <sighs> I'm going to put this down for a minute and try and work out my route because I'm completely lost. So I'm right back at the dam. Here's the first marker. And I've worked out why I went wrong because there's the track I was following, which is the well-worn one. This is the one I should be following. And I knew that that reservoir was hard on my left. Right. <laughs> Can I go back now? I haven't wasted a lot of time. <laughs> Wasn't paying any attention when I came in. That marker point should have told me. <sighs> right. Now I'm heading back the way that I should be. I wonder where that track goes out there then. I could look at it on Google satellite view and you'll be able to see the the track marks. Because that may have been a viable route to get somewhere. But I don't want to go so far out of my way and then get lost or find that I'm so far along my route you're adding miles and miles to it it's now about half past twelve so still in good time but it's uh, it's getting hotter so that sun is now really breaking through and I have a little bit of a walk to go to get back to the car yet yeah. with a lot of ups and downs. Right, so I'm going to leave you here. Although no doubt something will suddenly pop up as it did before. But yeah, I'm going to leave you here. So, I'm pleased to say I made it back to the car with no further mishaps. <laughs> no more getting lost. Uh, I stuck to the track all the way back. Uh, there wasn't really any other, there weren't really any other loops that I could take. So, it's, uh, what is the time? It's almost half past one. It's about 23 degrees. It does feel really warm now. I'm back down here. And uh, I'm just going to head home now. Have a nice cold or cool shower, and um, yeah, so out the rest of my day. So that was a really great walk. Had I not got lost, it probably would have been better. <laughs> it didn't matter. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a really hard walk. So getting lost, but it also still being on flat areas was really not much of a big deal. And um, I think. All in all, I've probably been out about the same amount of time as I was last time because I seem to remember getting back here about half one when I was up at the Westenden one as well. So, I should be home about two o'clock. Things to do, feel energised and even though I feel knackered and hot and sweaty, I still feel energised. I feel my brain feels better. And that's partly what it's all about. Really enjoyed being out in the country today out in the middle of nowhere, out with nature. It's so good for your mental well-being. So that's it, I'm heading home. Um, thank you for watching this. If you watched all the way and if you're watching this now, then you must have watched the whole way. And uh, we'll catch you up on the next one. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.